our sex life has been non-existent for years and my wife told me to go out and get some pills to get an erection. I, do this. I came back and gave her some diet pills. <laughs> I now live in with my brother and she's filed for a divorce. <laughs> I saw that I screenshot it sent it to Mrs B and I said oh. no but I said just in case you see you follow Fessel this was not me <laughs> And I'm Josh. And uh, welcome back to the podcast with as much direction as Stevie Wonder Whitewater Rafting. That's right. <laughs> it's the Breaking Bread Podcast. How have you been, mate? It feels better. like it's been a long time. It has been a little minute. I'm better than you two. Welcome to this week's flu cast. Man yeah. flu cast. You, yeah. You're both feeling it, aren't you? The temperature's I'm, not changed either. Like, it's actually quite warm outside. Nah, you can smell, you can smell winter, mate. That's, I think. That's you, that mate. It's like, I'm not, I'm not sick so much as it's just like my sinuses, my throat and whatnot. But it's like this time of year, I've got this theory that like my body has to just kind of recalibrate. Like a reset. It re- has to reset, like to go into winter mode and that causes me pain. Isn't it funny? Like it, his body's going into winter mode. He's not changed his attire. <laughs> no. So from last winter well, to summer, cold, back into winter. Yeah. When a, when, when a hoodie What's on that? What's on the, the hoodie today? No, I think it's a band. Somebody playing, a, somebody on a skateboard. What's it say? beard's in the way. It's a, is it a dog? Is it a turtle or a rabbit? <laughs> There's so many ob- oh, obstructions. There's your beard, this. your hair. I've sus what it is just by the name. It's the name of a, it's a band called Hot Mulligan. It was like my new favourite band. Ah. Well, that might be a bit extreme, but I've been listening to them a lot lately. Uh, but yeah, this one is a hoodie representing my love of, of that band. Very nice. I'm all right anyway, mate. Thanks for asking. Um, you're obviously both dying of, of man flu. I'm all right. I'm not dying. I, I very rarely ever get in, sick. came in a little bit like... George looks like he is actually dead. Are you all right, George? Yeah, I'm just glad I'm getting it now and not my birthday at the end of the month. Oh, uh, I'm just happy uh, about that. How, how old are you going to be? 25. Oh, fucking hell. I remember that was a good age, man. Remember that? No, can't remember. No? Too long ago now. I remember 25. <laughs> In fact, I can remember. <laughs> it's it's year, I, year before I met Lynch. That's when I started. This. <laughs> That's when I started if going great. Go back. <laughs> started going great at that age. Yeah, when I started this uh, video stuff, Oh, that, and you're 25. Yeah, 25. Yeah. That's about right, that. Yeah. George boy, you know what we need to do. Let's start this bitch with the old YouTube comments. Yeah. We're not getting ahead of ourselves this week. No. <laughs> We're actually doing it right. It's time for a YouTube comment from you. Okay, so his first comment is from Ingram Swimming. Josh uh, taking Ryan Reynolds on his new planet for the genetics and for repopulating, but doesn't take any women. <laughs> <laughs> I did panic in that episode, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that, you, you know the world that we're living today. If you start to be like, oh, I want to take these really fit birds to the, to the moon. And they just yeah, yeah. You went that whole episode without saying that. And now two minutes into this, you said, it. yeah, the worst part about, about which you didn't realise at the time, is the only woman that you postulated that you might take was a cook. You, you said Nigella Lawson. Then she didn't even make the cut in the end anyway. Yeah. But the only reason we're bringing it is because she can make food. So that made you come across as like the most... <laughs> sexist person luckily tell, tell, I, I was quite I was I was aware of that and I brought uh, <laughs> bring, oh my, well I brought somebody for reasons other than their cooking ability tell them about um, that girl from the gym when you go and film for stage to the cage oh god do we, do, and every we, time you go and film <laughs> do we have to go here it's funny, it's funny. <laughs> no like what happened what so there's one fighters out of uh, what Paul, happened what <laughs> out of Paul's gym at Blackledge MMA there's two fighters there's um James Lewis, who fights for Octagon, and his wife, Becky Lewis. And one of the opening shots of, like, episode four, before the session starts, Becky's sweeping the mats up, you know, like, cleaning the mats. But she's, like, the only female member of the gym. So, like, we used it as, like, an establishing shot in the show. So, obviously, the script, the lad screenshotted it and just spread it around the gym. So, she was raging. She blamed Paul. So, they just did it, like, strangling Paul for the last three weeks. <laughs> I'm surprised Channel 4 didn't say, oh, wait a second. But every time you go and film there, she's always doing some sweeping yeah, or she, doing something. Yeah, she keeps that, that gym in tip-top shape, to be fair. Yeah. But it, yeah, it, it didn't do much for stereotyping, really. <laughs> I, and by the way, Channel 4 are not watching. I don't think Channel 4 are watching these videos back, do you? No. I think they're just going... They've got to be proof watching them, man. Like, what, can, what if you did some weird, weird kind of... I think we'll find symbolic out. Symbolic white supremacist imagery in the well, middle or something. Because well, like, we've had not much guidance, have we? So there's like... I think um, as long as it passes passes like a certain the test, technical which test. Is, it passes the technical test but yeah. not like so as long as it's under 100 exposure and over zero yeah. it's all right yeah there's <laughs> no flashing images but like we're, we're like there's one where paul gets bl- his blood taken and we're like can we show that and like nobody knows the answer then there's one where a guy snapped his ankle wanting two 
somebody we need to blur that out. Yeah. You know? Did you did you blur it out? I don't, did we blur it out? I, um, there was like a disclaimer to oh, say right. it was coming up. So, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, they showed that on Match of the Day plenty of times, you know. Yeah. I remember when Eduardo broke his uh, ankle years ago. And it'll, it'll come back and bite us at some point. If it's an MMA show, it's to be expected. You're going to see some ankle snapping. You're going to see some blood and guts, ain't you? Yeah. Blood and guts. Um, what other comments we got? We've got a comment from Christopher Wilson. I have watched Turbo and it's not a bad film. Ryan Reynolds plays Turbo and it has Samuel L. Jackson and Snoop Dogg in it as well. It's true that. Bound to be a great film then, yeah. What a cast. cast. What a cast. <laughs> Have you watched it yet? No. I did watch a great, a quite a, a weird film last night, but a good one um, called To The Bone. About a, uh, it's about a woman who has anorexia. Oh. But I, I like, I don't want to say I like stuff like that. What I mean is I like dramas that aren't like, there's no fucking car chases. Nobody's getting shot to death with like an M16 or whatever. It's just a story about real people and the struggles they go through. But it was uh, interesting. Keanu Reeves is in it as well. He's a nice guy. So you can almost watch anything that he's in, right? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I'm still yeah. watching the Wrexham thing. But it's finished halfway through the season. Oh, Wrexham with my mate. Is uh, it still coming out? Ben Foster. He didn't play for Wrexham, does he? He, he did. did, yeah. Not in the TV show, he didn't. All right, well, you know, the real life is a little <laughs> bit probably, different probably to TV shows. before he played for them. He played for them quite briefly, didn't he? Like, it's a, be like half a season. If and that. I think then he, he said that he, he was a bit, I think he was disappointed in one of his performances, which I thought was very honourable. And he said, I don't think I can do this anymore. What, so they, were this when Ryan, Ryan Reynolds and the other guy bought it? Yeah. They still own it. Still, yeah. I don't know. I'm not that far in the, I thought they might have sold them off. Right, okay. Well, I'm, are they in the Premier League? Yeah. Forget, no spoilers. No, if I, no spoilers. There, is there only one series of it? There's two series, but like only one half of the second series. Uh, are they still releasing that then? I don't fucking hope so. <laughs> what a cliffhanger. What's the, what's the cliffhanger? I don't know. I don't okay, know a cliffhanger next. though. Like if you can. I want to know if they're going to get promoted. Oh right. Okay. Well, I won't spoil it for you. They're still in like a non-league. I think. I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> Have you seen the Beckham documentary yet on no. Netflix? No. no. Although I did see the clip of, of uh, Posh Spice trying to claim she was working class. You seen that? Oh yeah, yeah. And then David Beckham's like, like, "What did your dad drive? What did your dad drive? <laughs> what did he take you to school in?" And she's like, tries to bat it off like eight times, <laughs> and then eventually she goes. A Rolls Royce. And oh. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. The last great investigative journalist. Have, have you watched David that? Beckham. I've watched the first two episodes. So I'm halfway oh, through. It's a series. I can't. Who the fuck wants to watch a documentary about the Beckhams? Shall I do it's it? Not, maybe I'll maybe I'll suggest one to Channel Four or five, five or Dave or like even a shitter channel than that. <laughs> TV leads where it's like at home with the beards and all it is is like I eat some salad and Lindsay goes. Now that's like the Tyson walking. Fury thing. Oh, is it? That's I wouldn't like watch that, that either. It's He's nothing a like that. He's a Wally. <laughs> Who Tyson Fury is? Yeah. Fool. Why? Why? Yeah. Why? Why? Because I think just inherently, if you if <laughs> if one week you say, I'm going to fight this person for free on national television, and then you say, I want a billion quid to come out of retirement, it makes you a Wally, just by definition. Makes you a twonk, a twerp, a dickhead. I've just realised he's quite opinionated, isn't he? Is Adam? I'm clipping that. Is it? <laughs> what, what's he going to do? <laughs> well, Tyson Fury were coming on next week to promote his uh, next fight with Francis Ngannou. <laughs> uh, that's we've lost him now. You big dosser. All right. What was the next comment? Uh, we've got one from Johnny Wade. Um, I think if the Gordon Ramsay video becomes Beard's top video, Adam should wear a t-shirt on his main channel, which says curdled above a picture of Josh's head with Josh being a former seaman. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we must not be far off now. That's good. Uh, yeah, do you want to check? I can probably check if you yeah. want to. Uh, let me just it's mute so it so it doesn't start top playing. Dude. It's, got it's, to be, it's, it? it's definitely going to be, I think it's going to be second place at least, if nothing else. But it's obviously it's been up far far shorter time yeah. than, uh, than the... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is second, yeah, yes. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's looking into grunts. Yeah. What's it done? Yeah, yeah. Ten, 10 million um, behind one, which is 12 million. Oh, it's cr it's cracked oh, up as another up. one. It's, oh. Chasing that dragon, George. I wouldn't worry about it, man. I mean, they are the, the, the views are not the the be all and end all, right? I thought they are. I thought that's where the the dollar is. The be yeah, all. It's not all about all. like if it was all about dolly, you wouldn't. Anyway, dude, let's go into like creative, like artistic <laughs> integrity. <laughs> it was a good video, though, George. We got one final comment. I can't remember if we've read this one. It rings a bell to me, but we might have done. Who knows? Uh, good production there from yeah. George. Fucking hell. <laughs> from Feck Neddy. So I'm watching a man who eats English breakfast and pizza for a living and a media consultant whose film of the year is Turbo the Snail. I've obviously made terrible life choices and I'm still laughing. I feel like we've had that before. I don't know how we could have seen I put, it before. I, I, can't can't I, think I, put, I think I put it in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah your life's fucked, mate. You make feck, feck Teddy, Feck Neddy. Feck Neddy. He makes, uh, he makes a valid point there. Yeah. Cheers, Feck. 
Oh, Neddy. Um, I, I, yeah, cheers, fucking Neddy. Um, <laughs> we, um, you, have you bought an house yet? Come on. No, I'm like, I'm, 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 like I just can't. I, 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 I have to write a fucking jingle. <laughs> Biz looking for a house again. Uh, no, I, I haven't bought a house yet. No. Come on, tell us how it's going. It's not going very well, mate. Have no offers made. No. I'm going to see a, a, a make a, do a second viewing at one. Uh, so I'm not going to tell you where it is, but uh, uh, but the the kicker with that is like the garage is um it's not tall enough to convert into a gym. <laughs> is that the one that you said to me? I don't know anyone that knows anything about like, you know, things with their hands. So he's yeah. the closest to an engineer I know. So I was like, I was like can you, can these be beams in the garage be moved? And he just started laughing at me. So it's, Yeah, because he said, can, can these beams in the garage be moved so that I can do an overhead press? And I'm like, fucking hell. You could do it in like a, a basement of a building. You like, we just, you know, at low ceilings. You can't, well, you can't because I've, I've tested it. The funniest part about that is going around the house and I'm like, that was like the last thing we saw and I'm like, oh, it's quite nice. You know, it's smaller than our house now, but it's in a nicer area yeah. and whatnot. And it's got a nice little garden and stuff. And then we got in the garage and I just like, go like I could touch this, the roof. And I'm like, afraid it's a no. And the, the state agent's like, why is the roof's not tall enough? I need to be able to press a barbell over my head. And she looked at me as like I was. Can you not do it between the beams? So, you know, I can no. slash run that way. No. Way. no. No. Plus I'd need head clearance for doing chin-ups as well. But I, I thought it was funny that, she deemed that to be not a uh, clearly in her head, not not a valid reason to not buy a house, as if like it was something <laughs> superficial. Like, what, what do you mean? You can't I'm sure you could do something else, can't you? Do you have to push stuff over your head? Uh, yes. Um, so I'm, we're looking now. Like I, I might, I'll go see it again, see if it's all right. Uh, but it's quite a bit cheaper than what I've been looking at, which is ah. good because I'm a Yorkshireman, so I'm tight. You're at that age, though, you know, you'd like be downsizing what it's like bungalows and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if we downsize as well, it gives me another excuse not to have kids. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> looking, at, looking at it, getting one of those, you know, those wooden outbuildings. What's put a kid in? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but to put a gym in. Right. right. Outside, because I'd have a bit of, bit of cash spare, you know, so I could construct something outside. Put like a ice bath or jacuzzi in there. Do a little bit of gym half. Uh, not an ice bath, no. But just have a big gym. Well, reasonably big. That like about as big as this room, maybe. Maybe a bit narrower. Maybe from here to that wall and about as long. I've been uh, I've been trying to like tally myself against the uh, beard's lifting numbers. I keep, beard, I, keep man. I keep texting him. What do you call you? Adam, like you normally do. <laughs> yeah, but, are you dickhead? But, are yeah, are but, you that guy that makes me do all this fucking work? <laughs> but we're on a podcast where you you're in character. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you're, oh, out, okay. you're out of character. I'm not <laughs> you, <in> character. <laughs> but I keep test like I, I keep messaging like what's your overhead press, what's your Mate, front was, squat, what's your back squat, what's your deadlift? <laughs> I was impressed by your last you said you deadlifted like one one forty. Yeah, one forty for, for six, yeah. Which I mean it's not impressive, but like you know, given that you've just you pretty much only just started training again, so you've got obviously yeah, got properly, a natural yeah. level of strength. And obviously you'll weigh quite a bit more than me, but that's that's not nothing to be sniffed at, man. And uh, f- front squat at 90 kilos, I'm happy with that. I don't do, do, do front, front squat. Why? I can't. I don't have mobility. Mo- my wrist mobility is really yeah. poor. And plus, I just hate them. So, like, I think you don't need to do them. They're, they are an excellent exercise, but, like, you don't need to do them. So, like, I don't do them. Uh, well, speaking of as a pair of, like, elite athletes that we are, <laughs> um, you met an elite athlete, didn't you, at the uh, Starbucks drive through Oh, yeah, we, we retraced <laughs> what I said 10 minutes ago. <laughs> you just, uh, did yeah. we just spoke about him yet, have we? <laughs> yeah. We spoke about him. I said my mate Ben Foster... When we're yeah, talking about, about this, about the Wrexham documentary, Wrexham, yeah, uh, but you met. Are you him? having a stroke or something? <laughs> yeah, I met, I met him at the not c- completely, <laughs> completely by chance. Shall I tell you the story real quick? <laughs> yeah. So I'm going down to do a top secret, top secret special thing, right? And I'm in, uh, I'm in. Uh, <laughs> He's selling drugs. I'm, I'm in, no, it's like you know, I'm in, uh, I'm in Warwick, uh, around Warwick, right? And I think I stop at Starbucks. And I've got this theory that because Starbucks drive-throughs are always packed, right? It's quicker to just park up and go in. And obviously, you get stretch your legs. So I go in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but anyway. <laughs> and, um, so I'm waiting for my coffee right at the end of the thing, and um, so I can see through the delivery window. I'll send you the video, George, so you can overlay. It. Big fan of your uh, YouTube channel, mate. I'm big fan of your yeah, hello, mate. Great to meet you, man. Um, to give people context. And uh, I'm like, that looks like Ben Foster, the uh, former England goalkeeper, played for West Brom, Watford, Man United, briefly. Um, I'm thinking it probably just looks a bit like him, you know. But then as he turned, he's got quite a distinctive way of smiling, quite a wide smile, beautiful smile, but it's like, you know, so I was like, oh shit, it is Ben Foster. And as the, he was, I don't know if he was doing like some kind of food challenge, man, he, he, would, he was handed about six bags, six individual bags of food from Starbucks. So maybe he was practicing. But anyway, the staff member moved out of the way. And as he did that, Ben Foster went, 
And I, did, I didn't know like he, rec- he would recognize me. And he was like, so I said, oh, big fan of your videos, mate. Gives a wave. And he said, big fan of your videos as well, mate. Which was a nice little interaction. Uh, but I thought what a weird thing to, you know, c- complete chance that those two uh, I know. worlds two, converge. Two elite athletes converge like that, yeah. It was probably, I mean, goalkeepers, you know. Probably, there's probably not that much in it, is there? Yeah. <laughs> might be, I might even beat him, beat him in the bleep test. You never know. Um, but yeah, it's it, weirdly, I think it's like my most liked tweet on Twitter. I put the little video on Twitter, five second video, and like loads of people you seem to enjoy it for some reason. It, although you don't um, do the rounds of any podcast, you should go on. He's got a podcast, I think, called like Fozcast, I think. Yeah, yeah something like I don't know what name it is. But like, you don't invite, come on, I mean, we've seen this before. You don't invite yourself on podcasts. No, no. I'm, but I thought he would reach out and be like, oh. If you wanted me to go on the podcast, I'd, t- I'd do it, you know? Just purely because I think it'd be, in- I'd be interested to listen and talk yeah. about football. I don't like think I'd, I'd be interested. I've in seen it. a few of his videos on YouTube and he just seemed a pretty nice guy. Um, I met a football player this week as well. <laughs> I met a uh, Man United player no, you didn't. called uh, no, you didn't. De Bruyne. Lad, you're going to get us cancelled soon. Like <laughs> he did, I've got to tell people how this went down. So he, he says in the, the, we've got like a little break of bread chat, right? Um, and Josh puts in the chat something like, uh, who's this Who's this guy? This, this is this uh, a footballer? And he's called like Kevin something. Is, is he any good? <laughs> is he any good? And we're like, <laughs> Kevin who? He's like, oh, something like De, De Bruyne, something like that. And we're like, Kevin De Bruyne? And he's like, yeah, yeah. Is he any good? I'm like, yeah, he's only probably the <laughs> certainly one of the best midfielders to ever play in the Premier League. He didn't even know who he was. He could have been fucking cleaner for all I knew. We were at Manchester Sports Institute, Performance Institute or something. For Man City, not Man United. I, ironically, it was like across from the Man City ground, but I didn't know which ground that was. <laughs> so <laughs> it could have been at any of the, uh, one of the Manchester grounds. I don't play football. Do to you know be fair, I mean? for a non-football fan, he's pretty like unassuming when you look at him. He looked like he, he could have just, like like, like, just been one of people that... You know, yeah, doing caliper tests on Paul's belly. <laughs> didn't he? Like, uh, I don't fucking know. <laughs> didn't he refuse to be on camera though? We like to say that. Oh, what? he's not going to get you in trouble. I don't. I don't oh, fuck it, I've said it now. <laughs> <laughs> but we we managed to. What yeah. did you point a camera at him and he was just like, no, no cameras, no cameras, no cameras. <laughs> Smashed it out. Yeah. I play for Man United. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, we went to that performance shoot thing in in Manchester. Paul had a Dexa scan uh, as part of the stage to the cage. Show. Expensive those, man. I asked him, so apparently it's like supplemented is the cost. So it's only, it were only like hundred quid or something. To get Supp- de- who's supplementing it? Some, I think it might be like to do with NHS or something. It's not. <laughs> Man, honestly, I asked the fella, I went, how much so, is it? So, somebody's been, uh, somebody's done that for him. You don't, you can't get Dexes on the NHS for hundred quid. Every gym rat on planet earth would be doing it. They cost loads of money, man. I, I, it's on camera. I asked the fella, I went, here mate, the brand new one talked to me. How much, <laughs> this, how much does this cost? <laughs> Honestly. Right, I don't think it was a Dexter scan, that's probably something else. I, was, I watched it happen. I All was right. there. Well, let me see the footage, then what then I'll Right, George, we'll get the footage of Also, you're a liar. I'm just saying perhaps maybe you're confused a bit like you're confused as to where you were. <laughs> anyway, so tell us the story then. There is no story. Oh, what that was, was it. That you, was... you saw Paul get a Dexter scan and Kevin De Bruyne was there. Yeah. That's... Why what was he doing there? Just I don't know what he was doing there. Just doing some kickups or something. <laughs> he might have been having his prostate checked. I don't fucking know. <laughs> well, I thought it was like some arranged thing. Like, oh no, it was just. Oh, happen- I get then why he wanted to. If he was having his prostate checked, probably would <laughs> probably would refuse to be on camera, right? What do you say when like, hey, will you be on camera? Hey, yeah, can I film this? <laughs> I didn't know who he was. So how did what, how did it play out? Then how did you interact with this man? He came over. He My was- fellow ginger. How's it going? Yeah. What kind of what well, the, what, what the, fact of sun cream do you use? The, is it ginger? He looked blonde to me. Yeah, well, he every, had a, every he ginger says that. Like, like a he had like a. I saw him get in his car. He had like an Aston Martin. You know when they're four by four Aston Martins? Have you seen them? Like a cream coloured one, no. which I thought wasn't very Cream? Nice. Yeah. To make his but yeah, anyway, there were a bunch of people there that I didn't know. There were another boxer. There were a boxer there who was a celebrity boxer who apparently almost unified the titles called Jack something or other. Look, <laughs> don't know. They, want my, they want my finest hour. <laughs> I was just a cameraman, right? I don't know who these people are. Apparently they're all the athletes. Good what? clipless though, George. We're, we're named up in every motherfucker apart from that boxer who he doesn't know. <laughs> Met another uh, football player through that series as well. Well, Blue it did. Oh, uh, yeah. An Arsenal player, actually. Oh, yeah, who? Jorginho. Nice. Is he a, yeah. is he a when, first, first did, did team Blue, player? Did Blue it say to him, stop doing that stupid hop penalty thing? No, that, Blue, Blue don't watch football, I don't think. <laughs> He's so wasted on us. Blue it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think so. Blue is like a massive football fan. Yeah, we actually watched. Well, I don't watch think football. he knew who he was. Oh, at well, first, he's a Man United fan, though, isn't he? Blue it, so is he? They, 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 they've kind of got tunnel vision, haven't they? Man United fans. <laughs> You're Lincoln's a Man United, United fan, yeah. I knew who he was. Oh well, that's good. Is uh, Van Nistelrooy still play? No, <laughs> no, he retired. Like, could have asked De Bruyne that. 
Did you ever, did you ever a shoot a penalty against uh, Fabian Barthez? Shoot a penalty? Yeah. You, you sound American now. Like, that's what an American would say. What would you say? Take, Take a penalty. <laughs> shoot a penalty. I'm just going to shoot this penalty real quick. I don't know what we Why would he take it against Fabian Barthez? Probably in training. Because they're on the same team. Who are? Van Nistelrooy and Fabian Barthez. I thought we were on about De Bruyne. All oh, right, well. Right, you're confusing <laughs> that. Just, just like what, what happened? Like, what, what, did you say anything to him or was that it? You saw him? There's, yeah, there's no more to this story. Like, I, I'm sorry if we've gone down this rabbit hole. But I thought we were talking about the Arsenal player. Uh, well, <laughs> right, everyone's driving his tech tree now. All, just all like... this section of the podcast is idiots on the internet and like a film dude. <laughs> bumped into slash saw some footballers but nothing meaningful happened so you can that, that's, can a, million, that that's a, a million views put, put that on the YouTube tag bit where it just says pointless bit about meeting footballers skip if you want to <laughs> yeah. I've got a father and fail seg- segment for you though oh, it's, been a, it's been a while since one of those yeah thankfully but it's what bad's got to happen for it to happen play the jingle George till he's bumping ahead falling down the stairs it's time we hear the tales Josh's father and fails Yesterday, I had to set off to Coventry at four o'clock in the morning to go film Jake Wickenham. Lovely place. It wasn't a nice place. <laughs> um, anyway, I spent all day filming there. He was like, you know, sparring and kicking and shit like that. Then I filmed him, filmed him in his bed, recovering. Weird. Um, but I get back home and... Uh, <laughs> take it off, off, Jake. <laughs> yeah, take it off. off. Um, I get back home and Danielle says that uh, our little girl has been a little bit off. She seemed all right. She was just a little bit like, a bit moody. So anyway, a couple of hours passed. Bearing in mind, I'm wearing a brand new Vans hoodie at this point. Oh man. Um, See what's Tilly going. sat there on the on the sofa just watching like Peppa Pig. And she like goes, Bleh. and you're like, oh. And kids are like zombies when they're like, They're just sort of like, <laughs> strip. Daniel like, grab hold of her. So as I went and picked her up, I went and went to grab her, I actually went, bro. <laughs> Started projectile vomiting. And I thought, I don't want this all over the sofa or carpet. So I scooped her up and pulled her into me. So she threw up. Quick thinking. Uh, projectile vomited on me, drenched us both. Naturally, it splattered off, went all over the carpet, sofa. So I run into the downstairs toilet with her. And I, I stand her there. And I, I, I go to open the lid on the toilet. And she just chooses not to go. To, and I didn't say it to her, she's only two year old. She just she went, <laughs> just like projectile vomit <laughs> everywhere. So it's like so not in the toilet, no, just I, everywhere. Else. I should have it twice. <laughs> so there's like God. there's like orange segments and fucking uh, all sorts of spraying out. Carrots. And da- Danielle looks at me and she like these are her exact words. She went, "I'm flabbergasted how much you fucked that up." <laughs> <laughs> because not only did it not go in the toilet, there was sick everywhere, like in between my toes. I was covered in oh, sick. Oh, Tilly's God. covered in sick. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, everywhere. So then I, I like to try and help. So Tilly's, Tilly's crying. Danielle's angry. I'm laughing because I thought it was funny. <laughs> I grabbed the towel from like to dry your hands on and tried to like scoop up all this like sick and uh, <laughs> tried to scoop up the sick in the orange segments. So she's like, not only is there sick everywhere that we've got to clean up, you've also ruined the towel by trying to scoop up all the stuff. Obviously I had to run upstairs. Both of us kitted off, getting the shower to rinse off the sick, and Danielle had to do finish up the cleanup job, and, that, and then she she did that two more times after that. But that was the only time. That that sexist thing again. Danielle had to finish up the cleanup job because <laughs> <laughs> right. I was covered in sick. <laughs> so if you need any uh, inspiration to not have kids, the yeah. pair of you. That's because I, I rang him up on the way home <laughs> to like tell him where I'd got up. This to was three hours after this had happened, by the way. And he, he was like, um, right in the middle of the conversation, he was like, uh, I'm gonna have to go uh, till he's gonna be sick again. <laughs> yeah like to, he's there like trying to give me a load oh, yeah we've got to the episode 11 the stage to the case 12 12s in in pros and like, i'm like man, I've, i appreciate it but i've got to go she's about to be sick again <laughs> and sure enough yeah more uh, orange segments came up so well, that'd be a lesson to get a house with hard flooring yeah no, no carpets i'll just don't have kids i don't have kids yeah <clears throat> that's uh my plan yeah oh you want that team team uh I was gonna say team celibacy, but we don't, we don't need to go that far. But yeah. like team not have kids. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. You're ch- that, that's that's chasing you down though. That it's not gonna be long before Mrs. Beard's like, come on, let's go, let's have some. Maybe, maybe she have to get me in the right frame of mind, <laughs> the right mood. <laughs> yeah, comes along it's like once every blood moon or something. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> winter solstice, you might catch me in a, in a bit of a fruity mood. But that's that's about it. <laughs> right. So this week's. Uh, one of the main topics comes from a... Sub- We're just getting to it now. <laughs> it came from a subscriber, right? Have you got the uh, the screenshot, George? Do you want to read it? 
from the twi- from the from the tweet. Uh, Have you not got it? No. Fucking useless. I Fucking don't. waste of skin, you mate. So cats and bourbon. Uh, Laney said, saw Beard Meets Food, went to my hometown of Nuneaton, and it gave me a Breaking Bread podcast idea. Oh, yeah. That, the reason I was there, sorry to cut you off, is because I did that school talk, right? Which I, I've not seen you since I did that. Ah. Fucking like pulling teeth. Uh, but, uh, it, what it? Yeah, but I mean, that's not to say it wasn't uh, a, a, a rewarding experience, but it was, uh, you know what kids are like, you know, well, they were actually, they were like, you know, uh, six forms, so like 16 to 18. Yeah. And obviously they don't want to... Not the most forth- forthcoming emotionally, are they? You know, <laughs> fucking pot calling kettle black there, isn't it? The fucking dead inside <laughs> right, this uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry, c- continue. How did the talk go? Because then pictures you put on on your Instagram looked like it were from a horror film <laughs> <laughs> or, or photoshopped. Yeah, Mike said it looked fine. I, 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 did, I think it just I put it through a. There was somebody had take, obviously I didn't take him. So somebody just shot him on like a Nokia 6210 or something. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, like so, I try to run him through a couple of apps, make him look a bit sharp. Well, anyway. Uh, yeah, it was it was all right, man. It was uh, I never go in there like prepared with a speech or anything. Um, so yeah, I just talked a bit about like how I got into what I do, and then that, that asked I me just, questions about. I stuff. just can't imagine how that went. I just can you imagine him walking in with his monotone come with voice? Me, come with me, monotone voice. Yeah. All right, everybody. I, 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 I'll I'll tell be, you what, I'm a far better public speaker than you are. I could, I could put money we've on that. got fucking, we've got evidence that you're not because we did a fucking live show. <laughs> that was nothing to do with my public speaking ability. <laughs> that is, that is yeah, exactly awesome public. It. You were fucking public hosting public it, you speaking. silly cunt. We was hosting it, it was our fucking podcast. We was hosting it, you just we fucking were. digging your own grave here. <laughs> Fuck me. Right, cut this podcast short. I'll see you in a couple of weeks, he's off abroad. <laughs> but yeah, the talk, the talk went very good. The shout out to uh, uh, Thomas Moore uh, Catholic School in Nuneaton. No, Nathan's a fucking dump, though. <laughs> well, in the spirit of that, uh, Cats and Barber on Twitter said, uh, best and worst towns Beard has done challenges in. Uh, some, some oh, are- after we've done a challenge, I just pick worst towns. I probably have done that. I've probably done one everywhere. Just, make, just make it up. Yes, sir. We'll, we'll refer back to that fella on YouTube who's, who's got a spreadsheet of every challenge you've won, lost, or drawn. <laughs> That's mad, doesn't it? He's fucking... That's psychopathic, that. He's skinning <laughs> cats on a night, that cunt. Anyway... <laughs> 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 yeah, so that's pretty much the long and short of it. Um, I thought that's a good cop out idea. So Adam's got to do all the work. So Adam, tell us the best and worst places. Well, you, you've got to have some cities as well, right? It's not me. Yeah, I got. I was being sick on yesterday, so I'm hoping you're just going to carry us for the rest of this podcast. I was being sick on. Like, well, that's, that's the excuse. All right. Well, I, I could probably talk about cities I hate all day long. So you might be in luck, right? So the first one I got on my list is London, right? And I put that on there purely, purely. To uh, just to get it out of the way early, right? Because uh, for all the other ones, I've done like a, a short list of cons and one pro, so that if anyone's from that city or town, don't you offended. don't feel personally attacked. That, you know, there's gonna be something good about it. Um, but London, to me, there's nothing good about. I mean, you could make the argument that you know uh, it's got touristy stuff. Madame Two Swords is there. You know, you could go up the Tower of London and whatnot. But uh, I, I hate London. I hate driving there. Uh, <laughs> I hate the fact that there's like even now there's like two layers of of uh, you know low emission charge zones. Yeah. So there's like low emission and ultra low emission, um, and, <laughs> and, and there's no like the, the, you have to pay it by a certain time at night time. Then you have to go the, when you go over those bridges. There's a toll on the bridges, and the fact that it actually takes that much time to drive anywhere, and the fact that you almost should have like an additional like a bolt on course to drive and learn how to drive, which tells you how to drive in London because it's like a a law unto itself, right? You have to have a particular set of skills to drive in London. Um, have a particular set of skills. Yeah, like Liam Neeson. Do you um, think the low emission zone thing's a funny one? Because like, how long has the low emission zone been going on for now? And I'm pretty sure the emissions have not been lowered. They've just uh, made a lot of money from it. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just a money, it's, anybody, it's a money making scheme. I don't scheme. think anybody's under the uh, illusion that it is actually helping with low emissions. Yeah. Uh, it's, but like, I just hate London because it's too hectic, man. It's, uh, everyone seems like in a rush to go nowhere there, you know? <laughs> Like, uh, you say that about me, don't you, a lot of time? <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, like, I just, I just don't, I, I, I never, I never spend time in London and think, I love it here. The only time I've ever done that, actually, is when we did the cake thing, because it was on a nice, really mega posh street, yeah. I imagine. We looked out, getting a, and I was with you boys, and the people at the place were really nice. We just bounced straight out of London. Yeah. If I'm in, ever in central London, I'm going to hate it. And we left Josh behind. <laughs> yeah, we did. We, <laughs> we left, left Josh behind. We left yeah. one man behind. I agree. I, I've, the one time I've enjoyed London when I were in um, Kensington the other week, that was really nice. They were like a little t- Italian deli at the end of the road. When you were filming in that terrace that cost like £40 million. Pounds. Yeah, it, it was like a, I guess, a house. They, it must have cost 
15 million quid. Like I looked on right move and I thought the only person you? that can live here is Adam. The fuck out. <laughs> if you had, I always wonder like if you had that much money, like if your house was worth that, would you not just sell it and then go buy a castle somewhere nice? I think because people work there, they must be earning like mad money. Do you know what you I mean? But it's not the case that everyone that lives in a posh area of London earns loads of money. If I earn like 100 million quid a year, the last place I'm going to live is central London. Even if I have to work in London. Yeah, you're going to commute in. I'd commute, you know, like it's because it's that bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. In my could, opinion. Could get a helicopter, couldn't you, at that point? So we can write off the uh, the London leg of the, uh, the live tour that you were talking about. <laughs> uh, do, do, so do you, you didn't write any cities down? No, I, 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 if you remember five minutes ago, I told you I, I was projectile vomit. Was, was, that, was that going on? All, was that like a 24 hour Bug. long vomit? Yeah. Okay. All right. The next one I've got on, just to show that I'm not, there's no kind of north south divide bias here, is Sheffield. What's, what's the general consensus about that? Is, is, that, is, that, is that shocking? Steel is City. That? It's all right. Yeah. Well, it's I, a, it's a, yeah. It, the it's the talking of, clicks in South there, Yorkshire. Really. Like, I don't know what they're saying. It's just there. I just, I, I think Sheffield is horrible, right? Um, that's not to say the people, that's not to say the people from Sheffield. I just think the, te- the Sheffield town centre is awful, right? And the, my, my reasons are this, right? Con, one. I did, this, obviously this is just me, right? But to me- every, One of how many? The, the, only three. Okay. But it could have been a longer list. I'm trying to keep this concise. Con one is to me, doesn't matter where you are in Sheffield, everything seems inexplicably uphill, which doesn't make sense, right? But everything is uphill, like no matter where you are. So it seems like the the least logical place to to ever build a city. I think actually historically it was an easily defensible fort or like place, and then obviously they've made steel there and whatnot. But uh, yeah, the topography of Sheffield is not good. Meadow Hall's there. That's got to be a pro. That well, that does take me. It's not a pro, but oh. it takes me on something. The second con is there's literally nothing for tourists to visit. They have a botanical gardens, which sounds shit, and I've never been. <laughs> it might be lovely, but it probably isn't. But there's literally, tell me something else that you would visit in Sheffield. Meadow Apart Hall. From, that's not a tourist thing, that's a shopping centre. That, yeah, but people, t- people... Yeah, I know people visit it, but A, it's not in Sheffield, actually, really. And B, like, I'm talking about tourist things in Sheffield that you go to. So, like, in Leeds, you've got, admittedly, lots of shit stuff, but you've got Thackeray Medical Museum, Royal Armouries, you know, both of those are wank, but it's something to go see. Sheffield doesn't have any of that. Okay. And I'm probably going to get crucified in the comments. People, well, there's this you can go see, or that you can go see. But there's literally, to me, there's nothing you would go there for as a tourist. I agree. Yeah. And the final and probably most compelling con to me is that it's absolutely dilapidated. Like, it's like going back in time at 1972. <laughs> and I think that is largely because of Meadow Hall. So I think a lot of... The money's gone there. A lot of the money, yeah. And, and naturally people moved out, you know, like people oh, go shopping in Meadow yeah. Hall instead of in the town centre. And because of that, there's it's just like, there's nothing. It's awful. It's just like some grim concrete sprawl you know it's it's horrible to visit and it's hard to drive in as well like it's well not hard but like it's just unpleasant to drive uh, they're a proud bunch down there though you're gonna offend so many people have you done any gigs in uh sheffield george i will have done i can't remember them off the top of my head see that's that's wow. testament to how bad it is yeah you, have, can't, you can't remember them have you seen george been singing on instagram seen him man yeah i asked him for a request the other day still not fucking delivered what a sport i request? don't know the song you don't know the song Shadows fall so long before my eyes. Ooh, baby, I love you way every day. Yeah, yeah. You must know this song. Big Mountain. Well, I mean, Peter Frampton, right? Peter Frampton did it originally, and then Big Mountain made, I think, a better version of it. <coughs> oh, that just destroyed my voice. <coughs> to call it if I had. See, because I'm a musician, when people like chuck songs at me that I don't know, they're like, how do you not know that? Well, that You're a musician, how, you yeah. should know every song on the planet. Have you heard of, there's an artist called Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> I think he did the yeah. um, intro track for Turbo the Snail. Oh, yeah, yeah, that one. What's the... Uh... Love your way, every day. <laughs> Cut this out, Cut out. <laughs> Thanks for making my work for me, Adam. <laughs> Is YouTube ain't going to detect that, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. I won't cut it out, and if it's demonetized, tough shit. I was gonna, uh, we're going to need to earn that £5 from this podcast. Oh, oh, <laughs> it, that's, I can't believe you don't know that song. I, how do you not know that how song? How do you not even know the original, like the Peter Frampton version as well? I know you're young, but like your dad's like a, 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 he's a culture musician. Yeah, but my dad sort of raised me on certain types of music and sheltered me from everything else. So, well, what certain types of music? Like he showed me like pop punk and rock and... Is your dad like a bit of a hippie? Peter Frampton's technically rock. Just like... What did he say? Is your dad like a bit of a hippie? 
No. I just like, I, I, I envisage him being like a bit of a hippie, like music guy, like no. a swinger as well as he's a swinger. No. Oh. No. He must be good looking though. Or his mum is. Oh, they both are. My yeah. parents are both pretty good looking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Show us a picture of your mum. You have to bring your mum next time. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I'll show you a picture of Adam's mum. <laughs> I'll DM it to you. Feel free. What's it we on to next? Uh, oh yeah, I forgot we were totally forgot we were doing that. Uh, I can't believe you're not. Can you do before you go on to this? I, this little side little side quest. Um, side quest. I put this in the chat, and I, I went on Instagram the other day, and um, this was the first reel that popped up. Uh, I won't show you the reel, but it's it's an uh, it's got the emojis at the top, and it's somebody getting shot down with like an AK forty seven. So that was like my first thing that came on my Instagram reel. So I thought I'll report that because clearly that shouldn't be on Instagram. I reported it. And they went, no, that's fine. <laughs> How much that is tells that? you everything you need to know about the world, doesn't it? What I did before anyone gets too mad as well about Sheffield, there is a pro, to, like I said, to every one of these. So the pro about Sheffield is on the topic of music. Music, right? It has a, a, a very accomplished music scene. Pulp, Arctic Monkeys. Uh, I mean, like, I'm not a big fan now, but like, their the first album was good. Def Leppard, Human League, Joe Cocker, and one of George's favorite bands, uh, although I can't understand them, Bring Me the Horizon. <laughs> not one of my favorite bands. <laughs> No, well, they're from Sheffield. So it's got an eclectic <laughs> and very accomplished series of, uh, that, that's just w five of many. Uh, I always thought they were American, just because they, sound they American. seem Americanized. I thought they were as well. <laughs> oh, okay, look at you. Uh, we're dying here. Wait, am I going to the next one? Yeah. Luton. Fucking dump. Uh, <laughs> the risk offended everyone from Luton. Uh, it's dominated by charmless architecture. There's no architecture in Luton, which makes you think that's nice. You know, you go into like, again, let's say Leeds, or well, York, obviously, but like most cities have like a, a cathedral or a church or some kind of old, maybe some Georgian buildings or something like that. Luton has none of that, man. It's all just like horrible, uh, grey, concrete uh, misery. I think <laughs> for, for, for for like the duration of the of, of the of the place. This could be anecdotally me. Uh, misrecognizing this, but like it, to me, it doesn't seem to have any restaurants, just takeaways. Have you, um, have you done any challenges down there? Yeah, one. Do you remember, can you remember what it was? No. Was it any takeaway? No, I, I was just out of Luton actually, it wasn't in Luton, but um, it doesn't have a mu it doesn't have a music venue, which I think is all, is all <coughs> if it's, it doesn't have a music venue, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't. No culture. Yeah, exactly. It's hitting you as a place lacking in culture. But having said that, Luton, the one good, the pro that I've got for Luton is, it's multicultural, lots of different cultures there, um, and that seem to that seem to get along in in ha harmony, which is obviously a very good thing. Is Luton where that football team is? That's got like the yeah. little stadium that goes through someone's living room. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Ah, apparently we drove past that for the week. Should put that in there. Pro, they're now in the Premier League, although they won't be there long. I reckon I'm going to be in the Premier League. So I'm like, like I said, the no, documentary is no. not there yet. Not for any time. Not any time soon. Mate. Soon. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to buy. I'm going to buy a Wrexham T-shirt. I'm like, I'm a fan now. Do it. Cool. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Am I continuing with this? I feel like I'm just insulting like I've just, towns I've for no just reason. I've Googled Luton attractions and like one of the first one that comes off is like a casino. <laughs> it's a casino. That's it. That tells you everything you need to know, really. Case closed. Do you remember seeing, you remember seeing on my Instagram story when we were in Luton, me and Josh went for a Nando's and got stuck in the car park. Do remember, you remember seeing it a few weeks back? How did you get stuck? Because there was some traffic lights on a roundabout and then a taxi broke down at, the traffic lights and the roundabout. So it just turned into chaos where everybody that had gone into this car park couldn't get out. And it was also like a through route for people to get back to the motorway. And it was like World War Three, like people were proper kicking off. I don't remember that actually. You, you do? Yeah, no. mm. But uh, sounds like a cool story. Do you want me to go on? Uh, do, you, do you want me to keep going? Cool or? story, bro. I feel, I feel like I'm just assassinating the, each of these cities now for no reason. I think it's, it's better if you're taking some of the blame. Like if I'm oh, just yeah. saying these <laughs> cities are shit, then it's not really a podcast. Yeah, it's just I, me I, complaining. Luton's a proper shit hole because I went for an. You, you didn't pick one there. place. There's not one place you could tell me that you don't like. And give me some yeah, kind of Bradford. Oh, I'm with you there. Nah, man. Poor Georgie boy lives in Bradford now. <laughs> After he's, shit, he's, he's had to move back home. <laughs> he's, he's come back to Brad. Don't don't like you. If if you're gonna say all these other places are shit. We're talking worst towns, man. The worst. Probably you're you're the telling worst. me Bradford's in the top 10 it's worst towns. Bradford number one. The fuck out of town. Are you joking, man? What a fucking dive, man. Have you been to the city centre? Yeah, I go through, I, I, go, I don't go through Bradford a lot, but like, look, it's not, I don't The only good thing about it is the Alhambra. The Alhambra theatre. The Alhambra, you got like. The IMAX. 
The I- it. IMAX, it was City of Culture, wasn't it? Like about <laughs> 10 years ago. It's got nothing. There's, lots, uh, there's some beautiful mosques in there's, Bradford. There's a building. There's, lo- there's a building next to the Alhambra. But none of us are religious, so we can't enjoy the mosque, look, can we? No, but you, they look nice. <laughs> You could still enjoy the architecture of them. Yeah, it's nice to look at, but I'd rather look at a picture than drive through Bradford. Mm. I don't think you understand there, the there'll be, a mosque, there'll be a mosque <laughs> surrounded by buildings that have been like abandoned. For yeah, look, I'm not saying it's everything's perfect. abandoned. We, we, what I'm saying is we, we were trying to pick out the, t- the 10 or the five of the worst cities Yeah, I'm and pretty, towns. Yeah, I put it number one. All right, well, sorry, people of Bradford. It's not something I share, <laughs> but like... Uh, There's a building that's next to Alhambra that used to be like a big music venue. Yeah. And Rolling Stones have played there. Like, it's a big thing. And it's just been left abandoned and just, you know, like greenery just growing out of it and stuff like that. It's just been like that for <laughs> since I was born. It's like a, a map of Assassin's Creed. You can yeah. do a climate. Yeah. But yeah, Alhambra, like a the, walls, the Alhambra is the only good thing. I might go watch, the, watch Jake in the full Monty there. Is he doing it at Alhambra? Yeah, in a couple of weeks. Fancy it? Can we go see him? The guy could do that. No, I don't, I, I don't fancy I seeing Jake's knob, actually. I think they're like, I mean, a knob's a knob, isn't it? Right? There'll be like five knobs. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he is a knob. <laughs> this is when you've been at sea for a while. Like, kind of fancy it? Do you want to go watch the full Monty? Eh? No. I, 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 what I said, do you think I could be in it? I didn't say I wanted to go watch it. <clears throat> I don't think you I, I think you, you dance a lot. Yeah, you've got to be able to dance. But like, so isn't the point of full Monty that they're not dancers? So like the dancing must be fairly simple. I don't know, to be honest. I haven't seen it. Have you seen the full Monty film though? Yeah. But I wonder about the, the stage show. I think stage shows like are um, like what a talent. I think you've got to be very talented to be yeah. able to do that. Haven't they done a full Monty series as well? Or something? Yeah, I'm not, I, can't, yeah. I can't bring myself. Is that the same in. actors from the film? Yeah. So you got most of them. I d- you, you couldn't like, you haven't got the patience to go do a stage show. Or, or yeah, anything. no, I agree with that. I think, yeah. I think th- there's a certain type of skill, isn't there? I always think, you know, if you ever see, uh, seen one Shakespeare play ages ago, and I'm thinking like, it would be hard enough for me to memorize all the lines of a play if it was, you know, my native tongue. Yeah. I mean, Shakespeare is English, but you know, like if it's a language that you don't even really fully comprehend, you have to memorize all the lines yeah. and you have to do it live repeatedly. There's going to be times when you forget, right? So yeah, I mean, it must take some skill. How long is he doing it for as well? Like eight months or something? <laughs> like said. a year, yeah. I once saw a, Ch- you remember Chico from the X Factor? It's Chico time. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I once, I was forced, <laughs> um, like, uh, I had my arm twisted by my mum to go see, uh, what they call it Christmas? I've forgotten the word. Now. Pantomime. Pantomime. Uh, at the Alhambra, yeah. And Chico was was in it. So it can't be that hard. But like, yeah, I, I, I don't think I could, I probably couldn't do stage shows. We've had Billy Pierce on uh, Billy bet, Pierce's yeah. podcast in this room. Do you know who he is? Billy Pierce? Yeah, yeah. My grandma loves him. He's like a smutty Staple comedian. Staple the Alhambra. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was a funny guy in one when he came in. Yeah. Seems, like, nice a, seems like a laugh. Yeah, my grandma loves him actually. He's surprised. He's old as well, isn't he? Like he's like... Old as late, like he's been around for a long time. Yeah, he? been doing comedy and stuff for ages. Go on then. What's next on your list, kid? How long have you been going, George? I don't want to just keep ripping it to see. Forty-three minutes. Forty-three. <sighs> oh, man, I've got to keep going then. <laughs> right, next one. I, I feel no remorse in saying this. Stockton on Tees. If you're from Stockton on Tees, you're part of the problem. Is that? No, where, I'm, joking. Is I'm that, joking. I'm joking. Is that the one where um, Damien yeah. talks money? Went to he did talk about it, yeah. Yeah. So, and then we had to cut that bit out, though. Yeah, but only because he wanted it cut. And, like, oh. I would have been happy to leave it in. But uh, it's just a hideous place, <laughs> eh? Uh, it looks horrible. Um, it has a really high crime rate, particularly sexual assault. I think it's the highest. And I, f- and I think that might have been what Damien said. Damien said that it was the highest uh, the highest but, man-on-man rape in statistic the country. In yeah. the country. <laughs> and the hi- and the- I thought he asked us to cut it, and now we're just talking about it again. <laughs> Yeah, but well, it's not quite he, his mouth, he, has it? Yeah, you could say we were lying, even though we're not lying. Uh, he also said it was a. The, they did say I don't know if you put this in the con col- uh, pro column, probably not. But he said it wasn't it like cheapest cocaine or something. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that would not be a con for me. My friend, a pro me for anyway. me. Oh, <laughs> could that, that, would, that would not be a pro for me. Um, uh, and yet, to me, I, I would describe it. The best way for me to describe Stockton Tees, I've written down here is. It's the chav capital of the world. <laughs> it's like a souped up, cut and shut for the Ryan, Burberry fucking haze. You know what I mean? Like everything about it screams chavdom. <laughs> chavdom. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a, the, the kingdom of, of chav would be. Stop Wouldn't it be taste. funny to see him dressed up as like a chav, like Burberry backwards cap. 
We should find a Helly way to Hansen do it for the video. You can't, you, can't went, you can't wear it backwards, though. If, can, if you're going to chaff, you've got to have it forward. Oh, yeah. You've got to have your, like, your gold Elizabeth Duke earrings on. <laughs> what was that guy called? Devo. Did you ever watch Devo? Yeah. <laughs> That's the best thing to come out of Sheffield. He, he, got, Sheffield he, he got fired, didn't he? Because he was a teacher. Yeah. And they found out that he was doing these skit videos <laughs> on Vine, probably earned no money from it. <laughs> How did he get away with that? Back, you know, back MC in, Devo. MC Devo. MC Devo. Where he kicks a pigeon. Yeah. Do you think it's dead? <laughs> he, was, he, did, he did the song as well, didn't he? Somewhere is here and it's fucking, fucking buzzing. Yeah. Have a can of Kestrel yeah. and commit some act of domestic violence against my wife. <laughs> which we won't say. <laughs> yeah. the, the literally has got so much worse after that. Yeah. But that's, he was like a legitimate teacher at <laughs> high school and he got the sack. <laughs> Uh, but he lives on in infamy. Uh, uh, Devo, if you ever want to come on, mate, if you're still around, <laughs> probably like 16 hours. That'd be a good podcast, that. <laughs> no, it works. I mean, it's like, right, well spoken. I bet it's like when, um, like, Lee Francis, where he's not in character, is, you know. What's, what, what's <laughs> his character? Like? Avid Merrion. Avid Merrion, um, Keith Lemon, all the. I bet he's just like uh, a really well spoken a, gentleman. Yeah, I don't think he is. I've never been a big fan of his. But, um, yeah, the, the, I think, I, I'm sure I saw an interview where he said, like, he. he I could be wrong here, it might be a different person, but I'm sure he said, like, because he was a teacher, he was so frustrated by, like, the worst parts of Chav culture that that's why he started mocking, you know, yeah, yeah. Chav, sorry, and then he lost his job for it. Hope he got another one. Maybe we'll Google it after the fact, find got, out what happened to him. Maybe he made a lot of money from his uh, songs and his TV show. I don't think he did. I think I most of his videos were on Vine. I think <laughs> it was like, you literally couldn't make money from that. I don't think. Ah, he won Channel 4, wasn't he? Was he? Or E4? It's remember E4? Back? Might have been. I can't remember. I don't remember him being on there, but you might be right. Uh, I did pros to Stockton T's Parmos. I still haven't had a Parmo. The Parmo, the Randy's friend of the show, Randy Santel's favorite English uh, food stuff. Uh, if you don't know what Parmo is, essentially just a chicken cutlet, uh, like a schnitzel, breaded, fried, but then they cover with bechamel sauce and cheese. Lovely. In fact, it's, a, it's coming up in like, I don't know, God knows, about 2024. But I did a Parmo <laughs> challenge about two months ago and it was lovely. Lovely. It was really nice. It was a, like a, a pub, just a nondescript pub. But uh, it was a lovely Parma. Yeah. I'm on Parma for lunch. Got stocked in on teas. You can get them, get but like they're crap. You can get them from Leeds at some takeouts, but they're kind of naff. They're not real. Next. Is, oh, man. <laughs> this is going to get me cancelled, this video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't believe he still turns up and does this podcast, mate. I, I, I can't believe you turned out 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 all the shit that you turned out and the, you actually still do this is amazing. Yeah, because I'm not really talking about myself on this way. If I'm on somebody else's thing, I've got to Have talk about me. you how much like, prep he's done when it's talking about something he hates? Yeah, I know. No, because like... I thought he'd, get, he'd, he'd go off at me and be like, well, fucking hell, have you not brought anything, man? Like, <laughs> I've got all the cameras and we provide all the shit, so you have to do something. And I'll be sat there like I'm being told off until I realise, and then I'll be like, the fuck are you talking about? But anyway. <laughs> and then you'll wake up and realise, oh, we'll do that in real life. <laughs> right, I'm, I've got a, a, a few more, right, but... Uh, I'm going to say, right, Skegness. It's an absolutely shocking place. And I cannot believe how many people go on there, go there for like fun, you know, yeah. for like a, maybe not a holiday, but maybe like a day out. What about people um, that live there? What about a friend of the show on a cag Do you remember? Dies in every film's customs. He lives in Skegness. He lives in Skegness. Poor fella. That's why he probably came, right? He's out of Skegness for the day. Um... <laughs> So I'll just read through my list of cons. Shittest seaside place I've ever been to. <laughs> and the bar in England for seaside resorts, if you want to call them that, is very low. Right? Yeah. You got, for me, when I was a kid, Bridlington, Scarborough, Whitby, you know, uh, Blackpool on the other coast and whatnot. The nice ones are down south. But the northern ones, Skegness is the worst of those, I would say. Uh, and f I'd put that up there with Fleetwood. That is also yeah. proper shit. That's your contribution, that one yeah. line, so cheers. Uh, <laughs> I've never seen so many pound shops and betting shops in such a small area. It's literally just pound shops and betting shops and those crappy, like, arcade. Do you think they like drugs fronts or something? It's like every small town Morley. It literally goes <laughs> like... You have them all to the list. <laughs> yeah. It's like barbers, betting shop, charity shop, I think barbers, they're racket betting shop. shop and char what the fuck? The racket, I think I'm about Normanton, though. You know, Lindsay's from Normanton. I'm like, yeah. how are there, like, eight barbers on the street? How can they remain solvent? There's got to be competition. It's got to be. There's got to be rackets. I went to a, uh, I had to cheat on my barber. I'm, I'm backing with him today though to get a, a fresh cut. But a couple of weeks ago, I had to cheat on my barber to, but there's a Turkish barber that just opened up where I live. Yeah. And uh, they're, only, they're in a cash only operation. They've got a permanent problem with a card, a card machine. Permanent problem. So I'm like, that seems suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> I had to there's get- no, There's nothing illegal about taking cash only. 
I had, to, for potted. I had to get my hair cut during like lockdown and because where I used to get my hair cut was like over in Halifax and I was over at my mum's in Weatherby. So I went to this guy in Weatherby that I'd never been to before and he was the weirdest fella ever. He was like, the whole time he was like taking these like snacks out of a big bag and I was like... What, snacking whilst cutting your hair? Yeah, just like snacking on these like, little, What type of snacks? Little, tiny like, like biscuits and stuff. I'm like, what's that you're eating there? And he's like, oh, it's like cat biscuits, mate. It's apparently like got loads of stuff in it. It's like really good for you and stuff. Cat biscuits. <laughs> I told you about when Get I was- Get me out of this chair. It's <laughs> all when I put on Twitter of a week when I was in Wigan. And it was eight o'clock in- I've said this story could, on that. That could have been in there as well, Wigan. Yeah, Wigan could be on there. Eight o'clock in the morning, there were a lady sat there, chain smoking cigarettes. She'd run a second <laughs> double chocolate frappuccino thing and she was eating dog biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> it was eight o'clock in the morning in, in Wigan. And I, it's on my Twitter, it's there. Like I, put, I took a picture, I'm like, no, was, Adam's not going to believe it. Like, I suppose <laughs> in their defence, like how different can dog biscuits be from regular biscuits? Pretty different. Well, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, let me get. Um, let me continue the con list and then we can uh, <coughs> hopefully wrap this up. Uh it's, it's just it's, it's physically run down, a lot like Sheffield. I did say in its defence, it's probably a victim of the, the north-south divide and lack of council investment, but there's really no excuse for a seaside town to look that bad. I just mentioned Bridlington, Scarborough, and they're kind of shit, but like they're shit in a charming way, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, they just... But like, Skegness is just fucking hideous, man. Like, <laughs> it's just like... I would never go there voluntarily. I don't think know? you'd really leave your house, to be honest, like you, if you had the... I'll tell you one other thing. This could be me. If anyone's from Skegness or ever been, it might just be in my head, right? But I think the water is actually browner in Skegness, the seawater. That might make no like scientific sense, but like, so you go to Bridley, it always looks kind of gross, doesn't it? Yeah. Like English seawater. It's not like the Bahamas, but in Skegness, it looks <laughs> like, it's like bordering on black. It's that dark. Yeah. Like it's, it's just perennially murky for no reason. So I don't know why that is. Maybe it's a victim of all this like uh, sewage dumping that the, you know, companies keep doing. And uh, I think that's, uh, you know what I mean? Um, but it, yeah, it's just gross, man. Like I'd never gone on the beach. I feel like you'd catch some before I went on the beach. <laughs> Plus the name is like Skegness. It sounds like some fucking genital discharge. <laughs> Skegness. Who called the town that? Good old Skegness. I'm get, look, I'm getting excited now because you're making me- well, I Yeah, like I I love complaining. You know what I was going to wear? I forgot. I've got this hoodie that says miserable at best on it. I should have worn that today. <laughs> but, uh, you do look, you like, you like a bit more tired now as well. I bet I've, like, I've lost like three pounds as well this week. I don't have much to lose. Like, I'm, I've, I'm, I'm ill. I hope I'm not dying. I'm starting to feel a bit better now though. But uh, yeah, the, so those are the worst cities slash towns slash places in England. If you disagree, you're wrong. But like, feel free to leave your comments in the- the comments section. I did get some off. Uh, I did ask the Patreons to submit their, um, submit a few as well. And so we've got Matthew Harty put my hometown of Huddersfield <laughs> regular features in the top 10 worst towns in the UK. It uh, does right. But for some erroneous, erroneous reason, um, I think whoever compiles the list as a personal grudge. Yeah. I, th- I th- People always say, Oh, Huddersfield. I, I quite like Huddersfield. I think it's, I've never been there and thought this is horrible. It's got some nice buildings. Like when we went to that Peace Hall area, you know, when we filmed That's that. Halifax, mate. That's Halifax, mate. Is it? Yeah, it's Huddersfield's a shit all. Huddersfield's <laughs> not too Okay, bad. well, in that case, at least Halifax. But nah, where have I been to, when have I been to Huddersfield? I've definitely been there a couple of times. Uh, John Roberts said Northampton. That's that's Halifax. They're the same fucking what, place. Peace Hall. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's Halifax. What did we film? We filmed something in Huddersfield. Come on, man. Did we? Yeah. Anyway, sorry, go on. Did you see um, Secret Invasion, the Marvel thing with Samuel L. Jackson? Absolutely not. They filmed at the Peace Hall in the first episode. They blew, up, they blew it up. They blew it up? They blew it up. <laughs> not in real life, obviously. That's probably what you thought we were doing when I had that, with that drone out that time. You know, that guy came running <laughs> oh, after me. Oh, that was Halifax as well, that one on his field. You just got... That's I didn't where say it was, he was talking about the Peace Hall. Yeah, but before you, you went, we've been, we've filmed there. In, I think yeah, but I thought we, you, we had filmed there. But it wasn't, it was Halifax Whatever. as where, well. Yeah, no, that, so those, that, that was, that was at the, that Peace Hall thing, which I now know is Halifax. Yeah, it wasn't. Where you filmed, where we filmed that b- b- barbecue thing. Yeah, it wasn't. That wasn't the Peace Hall. Where was it then? It was like just one of the mills. One of the, yeah, one but of, near it, that's all like, that, those mill things are the same <laughs> yeah, thing in Halifax. The, yeah. Fuck's sake, like, just Clough. keep going. Dean Clough, that yeah. was, yeah. <laughs> it's not the Peace Hall. <laughs> no. No, but how, how, is it far away? Not too far away. Yeah, so shut the fuck But it's up. not the same thing, it's is it? I didn't thing, say it was no. the same thing. You did, mate. I'd, well, all right. Well, if I did, I'm, I'm, I apologise. <laughs> have you gone to Benadryl this morning? Or I'm just going through your fucking skull. 
That's where I used to get my haircut, didn't you? Um, Northampton, uh, taking one of the biggest nosedives in recent years. I know Beard did a pizza challenge there at the Playhouse. Northampton? I but Northampton like is a fucking toilet. Uh, special mentions, Aylesbury and anything inside of the M25. Uh, Milton Keynes, people think the centre is nice, but the rest of it is a dump. <laughs> Boston and Peterborough. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think... Uh... I don't think Northampton's bad, in my opinion. But like, that's... I don't recall Northampton being bad. To be fair, I've done quite a few challenges there actually. There's there's, some, they've got there's... three, I think. Cool, cool place for like. They've got some good restaurants there as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Peter Bruce, that's wank. Um, in other news, um, Mr. Beast has done a tweet. George, you want to explain? <laughs> you, you sent this to... into the chat. I didn't. I don't particularly know why. We have but... to mention Mr. Beast in every episode now. <clears throat> Do we mention him that often? We mentioned him in the last few, I think. So he tweeted or X'd, I messed up. I bought a random grocery store and told a random person I'd give him $10,000 every day if he lives in it. And it's been weeks and he shows no signs of ever leaving. I'm going to go broke. Cool story, mate. Yeah. yeah. Ace. <laughs> well, you should be, you should have your own podcast with uh, lines like that, mate. Yeah, but I don't know what you're supposed I to say about that. that. Well, me, I looked at that and went, Adam, if, if that were Adam, you'd never come back out. Well, well, you tell it up to you got like a few million quid and then like just walk back out of there. But I suppose he could just doddle. close it down. Like he's not, he's not contracted, is he? It's not like he signs a contract with the guy that says he'll give it. It's just like a verbal agreement. And I'm pretty sure Mr. Beast's got better lawyers than this bloke who's living in his grocery shop. And he, I bet it wasn't random either. I bet it was very considered probably because he probably uh, got or rented or bought a grocery shop that was cheap. He's probably not buying one like, oh, randomly, boom, in the middle of New York City, is he? <laughs> I, could, I could be wrong, but uh, I'm probably not wrong. <laughs> There you go then, George. That's that. There you go. Should we finish on a festival? I, I we need to wrap this up because Adam looks like he's uh, about got to the edge of his uh, tether. Yeah. Of his, uh, I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite um, cantankerous today, aren't I? But like, I think in a positive way. I'm not like I'm not in a bad mood. I just, I just quite like expressing dissatisfaction at things. <laughs> <laughs> and if I need an excuse, it's because I'm ill. <laughs> <laughs> what episode are we on as well? Like, what's his excuse for the last 89 episodes? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when it lands a train with Elliot he, uh, he sent me a message he, went, he goes <laughs> E.T. sorry go <laughs> he goes I've, I've gone through the back catalogue of the podcast and I'm like why the fuck are you even listening he's like I've gone that far back it's now changed to Tory Mike in your seat yeah. I went, he goes it's thrown me way off <laughs> George you should be Scouse he's like George you're Scouse I said if you go back even further you've got Liam remember Liam did it yeah did it? remember Liam before you heartlessly sucked the poor kid I thought, I thought it was always Mike no, I'm sure no, Liam did Liam for a bit. Did two? I think he did two. And then Mike made him <laughs> quit. <laughs> Mike made him force him to <laughs> walk out the studio. So he had to. We had to terminate. I contract. bet it's because like Mike overexposed it. Twelve stops. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever he was trying to edit. Sabotaged. Fest <laughs> uh, hall. Right, we've got three. So brace yourself, Adam. It's all right, man. I'm, this has cheered me up today. And these are all from Josh. I've not picked any of these, so you oh, kind of know what you're in for, aren't you? All right. For five years, I have regularly trimmed my pubes down the side of my house. No, <laughs> noticed a bird's nest under the eaves of the house near where I trim. A few months later, the nest had blown uh, blown down due to some strong winds. The sparrow had built its nest almost entirely from my pubes. <laughs> I don't believe that. That's, that's, that's too... Uh, I'm, not, I'm not having that. Why? That seems logical, doesn't it? Do you want to like, shave your... No, because a sparrow's not daft. It's going to get things that are more substantial than pubic hair. Like, unless he's got pubic hair that's... If you imagine, like, pubes, though, like, or, or like, if you get enough of it, I imagine it's quite a cushiony, cushioning, like, bed. I could believe it if it was just hair. Because, like, I've seen, like, some of the hair I pull out of my beard comb is, like, quite thick. And, they're, yeah, they're similar to... But pubes are too short, man, to be substantial enough. Like, how are you going to knit all those together? But how big's a sparrow? I... <laughs> I don't know, my David Attenborough, so I don't, I don't know how big a sparrow is. But that's a good one, yeah, George. Next. <laughs> Your camera's gone, so... What do you mean it's gone? Stuck to the wide, yeah. It's gone black on the screen. What's it gone off? <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Just stick to the other ones, we're nearly finished. we're right at the end, anyway. Sickness ASMR. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, man. He's snotting over there. Your coffee. <laughs> Fucking camera's gone off. <laughs> it's carnage. Well, should we just not bother to this out this week? I think it's been all right. We've done worse ones. Yeah. <laughs> Let's finish. So I quite like it when I smell a bit sweaty. It reminds me of my granddad who died a long time ago. If you think that's weird, it's usually a sweaty minge after a day of work that makes me think of him. I feel all kinds of weird. 
miss you big man <laughs> oh that was alright until the minge part you know what I mean it's quite heartwarming until that what's the next one right. <laughs> last one uh, <laughs> our sex life has been non-existent for years and my wife told me to go out and get some pills to get an erection oh, can't do this one. I came back and gave her some diet pills <laughs> I now live with my brother and she's filed for a divorce <laughs> I saw that I screenshot it and said it to Mrs B and I said oh. no but I said just in case you see you follow Fessel this was not me <laughs> that's bad that <laughs> we've got a, we've got a very similar sense of humour so well, there we go what a fucking shit show um, chances are kids that there's not going to be a podcast next week because Adam's off to Norway you don't, um, hey, don't blame me man like I've been fully available for like the majority of this past week I'm here on Monday next week. Um, so if, it, if it, it's not you, it's because you're out there what, saying, oh, Jake, take your top off so I can, so I can capture your striations in 4K. Oh, oh yeah. He's getting oh, jealous because yeah. I've made new friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, for the record, it's not my fault. But I mean, I don't think uh, nobody's going to be sat there with bated breath next week. Oh, when's the Breaking Bread podcast no, coming? No, I don't think they are either. So, uh, but thanks. I mean, loads of people still. It's like, amazing that people re- literally listen Relatively loads. I mean, I saw the last one do like 3,000 or something. 4,000 and I think it's in about 7,000 listens. So 10,000. It's, 10, 10, it's 10. mad 10. that people actually listen to it and don't watch it. More people listen than watch it. I know, it's, cr- it's crazy. But and we put uh, all this effort into video. <laughs> We're like, oh, is it colour graded right? Does it, <laughs> does it look nice? Is it in focus? Nobody gives a fuck. Yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching, listening. <laughs> Peace. I need to get some Kleenex now, like some Lemsip. I bought some Lemsip the other day, right? You sound like you need Lemsip. I, did, it did, it, I bought Lemsip. When the fuck, since when have Lemsip made tablets? So I just saw Lemsip. Took it home. Probably about 1980. Yeah. Like that, yeah. What? Where's the sip then? Because I got it home. I think it's the drink, the honey, like a lemon yeah. drink. And there's just, and it's just some tablets. I'm like, what the fuck do I do with those? I'm supposed to empty them out or something and then... Ah, oh, you two are going to make me sick now, aren't you? Probably, but... Uh, well, if Tilly hadn't anyway. Yeah, she was she literally sick on me, yeah. Can't blame us. Sorry, the sooner it's out the way, the better, and then you can enjoy Christmas. You don't want to be getting sick at Christmas. You're going to get sick okay. at some point. Anyways, push! <laughs> Bye! <laughs>